Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. Today on the podcast, let's talk about business partnerships. This is a very touchy subject for many people, and I'm sure that there are a lot of people who have previously been in business relationships with a friend or a family member or somebody that they knew previous to being in business that they they will relate a lot to what we're going to talk about today. So Let's give five-ish tips on what you need to consider when choosing a business partner or going into business with a business partner, no matter who it is, whether it's someone you know, somebody you don't know, if they're a friend or a family member, it doesn't matter. These are things you should be thinking about no matter who it is. First of all, do your due diligence. For those of you who don't know what due diligence means, it means do your research. If somebody is telling you that they're able to do something, they will take care of, you know, looking after the finances. Make sure that there's a proven, clearly proven track record that they know how to take care of finances for a small business. Make them show you how they've done this before. If somebody says that they can take care of web design or social media or manufacturing, all of these things are different elements of a business that if somebody states that that's what they're going to be able to do, make sure you as a person they're going into business with, no matter how disrespectful you think that you're being, Let go. This is not about respect or not respect. This is about you making sure that you're making good decisions. So do your due diligence. The next one. Power is an important thing to consider in any kind of relationship. So at the beginning of a possibility of you going into business with another person, I invite you to think about where the power dynamic sits in your relationship. Do they have more power than you because they're asserting more power than you or because you're giving them more power than you? It's important to understand the perceived power dynamic between two business partners and make sure that that's reflected in the agreement before you go into business together. So for example, if one business partner seems to be the person who's making all the decisions but only owns 50% of the business and you own 50% of the business but you're a more passive participant because you don't like conflict, this is an important piece of information for you to have before you go into business with somebody especially when it comes to you wanting to have a say in the way that things are done. So clearly understand the power dynamic within your relationship before you go into business. And look, I'm aware the things that we're talking about here today are uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to do your due diligence on somebody or to assess the power dynamic of somebody if you know them already and you may not want to see this you just see a great opportunity and you want to go into business okay but if you don't do this now it's going to cause a world of hurt down the road trust me I've seen it again and again and again all right number three know your lanes so In Elixir Specialty Coffee, we have three business partners. I own 80% of the business and I have two business partners that own 10% each. One of them is my lawyer and the other one is uh, a financial investor from early, early days of Elixir. We each know our lanes. My lawyer takes care of all the legal stuff and any of the legal stuff he's not an expert in, he helps direct all of those things. For example, when we did the trademark, he got everything started, but when we needed to move it to somebody else, he facilitated that process. 
when it comes to the financial side of things with regards to if we need to create more capital, etc., etc., my other business partner helps me with that side of things. Everything else when it comes to manufacturing, when it comes to branding, when it comes to social media, when it comes to anything else, I'm the CEO of our corporation and it's a registered corporation and I am required to make all the decisions when it comes to that th- that side of things. We know each other's lanes and because we know each other's lanes, we know what we're responsible for taking care of. So I'm not going to be responsible for making sure that we have all the legal stuff taken care of because we've got our lawyer who owns 10% of the company who is required to do that as a part of our business partnership agreement. And we define this before we started doing business. More often than not, what I see is two people who are highly passionate about coffee that want to open a roastery together and they just decide, well, we're both in this, right? Whether they're brothers, whether they're sisters, whether they're just best friends, they're, or they've worked together in a cafe before and they've realized like we're both really passionate about coffee, let's go open a business. Okay, but there are many, many, many lanes that need to be covered when you're opening a business and you can't occupy the same lane. So figure out what all the lanes are. There's the finance lane, there's the bookkeeping lane, there's the branding lane, there's the manufacturing lane, there's the everything, all the different lanes and assign them out based on people's strengths. Then you'll be left with the things that neither of you uh, have any strengths in. You've got to figure out how you're going to assign those lanes after that. Because then we come to our number four uh, tip on what you need to consider when going into partnership with another person in business. And that's about accountability accountability is so crazy important in a business it's it's important for many reasons but this links directly to what we were just talking about which is knowing your lane when you are required to take care of a particular part of a business and you don't do that there should be measures in place that catch that you haven't done that before it becomes catastrophic to the business so that other people can help you understand that there's trouble coming. For example, if you're taking care of the books and you are responsible for filling in quarterly tax statements and you didn't know how to do the books before and you guys couldn't afford an accountant and your job was to learn how to do all of this. A part of the accountability structure of the business should be that a month before, so when you do your quarterly meeting and your monthly meetings, at the beginning of the second month of that quarter, the accountability matrix or spreadsheet says, okay, next week, next month, we need to pay our quarterly taxes. How are we going on that? And you as the person who's accountable for it needs to be able to tell the other business partner or partners where you're at with regards to learning about that and filing that. The month of in the monthly meeting, uh, your accountability meeting, somebody needs to say to you, are we on track to file? Yes, and this is how we're doing that. Or no, I'm not across that yet. Now, if you, if the other business partners hear that you haven't got across that yet, then somebody knows that it's important to get on your case and hold you accountable for making sure that you do get on that because the ramifications for you not filing your taxes could be catastrophic to the business. You may get fines, your business may get closed down, etc., etc. And so accountability isn't 
there to get you in trouble. Your business partners, well, all of you as business partners need to hold each other accountable to make sure that the flow, the pulse of your flow continues to move uninterrupted. And if it is starting to kind of slow down a little bit, then it needs to be picked up before it comes to a halt. So that's why accountability is important. And number five, we need to have a strategy for dealing with change. That includes if the change is so extensive that an exit strategy needs to be implemented. And this is something that needs to happen at the beginning of a business partnership. So when I have clients and we're talking about a business partnership, we're talking about all of these things. Who's accountable for what? What are your lanes? Uh, have you done your due diligence? Where the power structures lie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you never expect at the beginning of a business partnership that you're going to need an exit strategy. But we always talk about the long-term plan. What is the exit strategy from the business if things don't go the way that you expect? What's the what's the strategy for dealing with things if situations change? So let's say you get halfway through the setting up of a business or you're 12 months in and this happened to me. This happened in Elixir Specialty Coffee. One of the business partners, in-country partner for America, decided a few months into um, production and being here, he realized that he is just not cut out to be a business owner uh, in the in the manufacturing sector, which is what we are. We're a beverage manufacturer and we're a, a highly innovative beverage manufacturer and he was in the coffee industry at the time but this was not something that was within the scope of what he was able to do and so we had built into the whole thing uh, that if within the first 12 months we weren't going to have any firm rock solid we're going to hold you to these contracts until the end of the first 12 months and it was kind of like a, a dating period if you like of we were feeling him out and he was feeling us out. And I think it was something like six months in, eight months in, we had a conversation. His performance wasn't going to the standard that he had said he could deliver on. So we just had a conversation. And and this was really great because I could call one of my other business partners and said, listen, I've got a concern. I don't think his heart's in it anymore. And... I need to have a conversation with him about it. She was on the same page as me. Let's put together a structure of how we either, um, if you know, how we're going to get to where we need to get to with him if he wants to stay with the business or what's the exit strategy if he does want to leave. And he, the next day I had a conversation with him and he said, listen, this just isn't for me. And so we had to activate an exit strategy immediately, which resulted in me having to hand over production in Australia to someone else and move over here very quickly, very, very quickly, which came with its own kind of challenges, I guess that we can use that word. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to write the book about this, <laughs> but It was really challenging and we just had to adapt. That's what happens when you're a business partner. You have to pick up the slack that other people put down. But being prepared for it by knowing what the strategy is going to be when that happens is something that prepares you so that you can recognize it when it's coming rather than when it's already here. So there are five things that I encourage you to consider if you are thinking of going into business with someone. I promise you, friends, this will save you a world of hurt. Um, if, if I can help with any of the one-on-one consulting to help you set up a business partnership uh, in the coffee industry and what you guys should be looking at and considering, I've done this many times before, uh, it wouldn't be like a legal partnership uh, setting up the legal side of the partnership, it's negotiating the kind of structure around how you'll do it all. Let me know 
if it's something that I can help with. It's, I'm highly passionate about it. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day.